Hey guys, it's Milma here with another Xcode tutorial. In this Xcode tutorial, I'll be teaching how to add an icon and a loading screen to your app. Now, if you haven't watched my last tutorial uh, about iPhone graphics, go watch it there because it explains everything about what I'm going to say in this tutorial, what Retina screen graphics, why they have to be a certain size and why they have to be named certain ways and stuff like that. And also, go check out uh, my good friend uh, Jan Martin, he has been making the, um, the graphics for these tutorials and uh, you know you should go check out his channel, he teaches you how to make them in his in his two videos um, so yeah go check that out so first off we need our icon and our uh, loading screen images for the loading screen we're going to need to call it exactly default.png because default.png is a known thing in Xcode, so it will automatically add it as our loading screen. It will, it will just know, because it's called default.png. If you don't call it default.png with a capital D, then Xcode won't know what you're talking about, and it won't display it as the loading screen. Again, like I said in my previous tutorial, we need a Retina version of this called default at 2x.png. Um, the sizes of these are 320 by 480, as we don't want the status bar there, so we're going to have it, you know, no status bar graphic, and again, 640 by 940. For the icon, we're going to need a normal icon at 57 by 57 pixels. Again, it's going to be called icon.png with a capital I, because Xcode will automatically add it as our icon. And again, we need a retina version of 114 by 114 pixels at icon at 2x. We will also need an icon of 512 by 512 pixels, as this icon will be displayed on the App Store. However, we don't need to add this to our project. This is for later use when we actually upload our app to the App Store. So make sure you make one. Uh, 512 by 512 otherwise you'll be a bit screwed later on when you have to make this 114 one and as you can see it doesn't look very nice when you make it bigger it looks very pixelated so make sure you start with the largest design at 512 so with that out the way we now all we need to do is drag both the default.pngs and the icon.pngs into our project drag and drop I'm always copying them because that's always great like so, that's that done. As you can see, Xcode has automatically down here added our default.pngs to launch images. Don't worry about the warnings because it's just letting you know that it should be 320 by 480 pixels, uh, which it is. Um, so, yeah, now we can just build and run, and as we have named them exactly that, Xcode should automatically add it. Before I run though, I'm just going to show you that, you know, here's our app here, it's completely blank. So if I run now, you'll see it gets an icon, and we have a loading screen here as well. Now that loading screen was pretty brief, and our icon has no gloss on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our coding here. We're going to go down to the info p list. We're going to go over here to icon file, and under icon file, we can type in the name of our icon. For this, we can just type in icon.png. However, if your icon is named something different, then you can also put that there as well. Remember, it has to be 57 by 57. Don't worry about the Retina version. Xcode will automatically add that for us if we need it. Then we add a new cat, uh, a new row, and we're going to type in icon already includes gloss effects. This will be out allow to allow us to. Oops. This will allow us. I don't know what that's talking about. Oh, I already have it added for some reason. Um, let me just delete that. Alright, here we go. Um, icon already includes gloss effects. If we type in no, then Xcode will add the gloss effects for us. So that's what we wanted. So we're going to go up here. If I now quit, you can now see we now have a gloss effect on our icon. However, if we don't want it, we can just type in yes. Enter, save, stop, build and run again. And you can see here that Xcode now takes the gloss off. So that's a way of you adding your gloss. Now to fix the loading screen. If we go into the appviewdelegate.m and go under the application did finish launching with options method. If we just type in here, sleep, and then however many seconds we want the loading screen to show for, 
So what about three seconds? Type in there, three, save, stop. Now I can build and run. And you can see our loading screen lasts for an, uh, three seconds. And then it goes into our app. And as you can see, it automatically adds the Retina graphics for us. If I were to change the hardware here to uh, iPhone instead and rebuild and run, you can see here Xcode will change the graphics so it fits the iPhone. And yeah, you don't need to do any extra coding as long as you have these names set. Default.png, default at 2x.png, icon at 2x.png and icon.png. If you want, you can always drag and drop them on top here to icon for that one. Click yes. However, like you just saw there, it will try and add a new one. It will actually copy the icon file. So if you already have them, then there's no point, my personal preference, you dragging and dropping, pressing yes to copy, finish like that, and then you adding it like that because it just adds a new file, as you can see. That file, that file. You can if you want to, but you know, it, I don't really mind. Everything works, whatever works, works. So there you go, guys. There's a quick um, tutorial on how to add a loading screen and a uh, and an icon to your app. Uh, check out my next tutorial, which will be teaching how to change the background image of a UI table view. Again, don't forget to check out Jan Martin's channel because he's the guy who made all these graphics. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, annotations uh, pop at the screen there. And don't forget to click on the ads in my videos because it only takes a second and it will help a lot. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe and see you in my next tutorial.